this is the bark that I'm currently working with. And um, for those of you who aren't um, familiar with this material, it looks like this. I'll pull the camera back a bit. So, and it comes in lots of different vibrant colors. It's uh, for, from Steph Francis. And there are areas of it that are quite sort of almost crusty feeling. And then there are other areas that are very um, soft and kind of malleable. But someone asked me if I had wet the um, bark before I used it, and I haven't. I haven't tried that, but I'm guessing you could. You could wet it and um, manipulate it, and I'm sure it would do different things. What I do is I tend to just pull on it and like stretch it. You can see there's almost like a grain of wood, so with like a knot, you know, of a tree. So I like to stitch along the grain. Um, I use this material quite a bit. I really, really love it. I love how easy it is to stitch through. I love uh, the way it looks um, when I add it. And right now I have it on this piece that I'm working on. And I'll back up so you can sort of have a better look of, of what I've, how I've used it. But I'm using it along this side here. I've also added it here. This is also the bark. This is a, um, a silk waist roving that I've added and then stitched on. And this is also some bark that I've added and I haven't stitched this piece down, though I did do uh, some seam stitching along here to add that piece. And this is just on this piece. On my larger uh, turquoise uh, background, project that's getting quite big now because I've added several other pieces of fabric to it. I've used uh, this color bark as well as a green um, and I, I'll, I'll show that a little bit later in a in a I can show it in a photo. I also just used a little strip of it right here along with some roving that I put down first and then added the bark over and I quite like how um, I, I quite like using the bark in combination with a roving either a wool roving as this is or using some of this material which was sent to me by a lovely woman who has a shop in Ontario Beamsville Ontario and these are different locks and low no mohair locks that she sent me as well as things like this which are more locks she has a shop in Beamsville, Ontario called Nancy's Fiber Art Shop. I'll put the link below for that. Um, just really wonderful material. Uh, this is also silk waist. Um, I think on Steph Francis, I'll put the link for it, but I think on Steph Francis' site it's called Throaster Waist, Silk Throaster Waist, so, waist something like that. But um, I just love this. They sent me this, and I've used a large amount of it already and will continue to use more. Um, you can see where I used it here to obscure some of this wool uh, X. And so I'm going ahead right now, and I'm stitching this um, bark. Now what I did here was I stitched it with a running stitch along the edge of my fabric and you can see how I've stitched it. And now I'm adding another bit of it down below to cover this edge so that the whole edge is going to have this kind of raw uneven edge of bark. And I just um, I mean, I can, you can use any kind of stitch on this bark. Anything that you would use on anything else, you can use on the bark as well. Um, I like to just kind of adhere it with a little, just tacking it down in places. And um, 
I'm not really thinking too much about it, but I am, I do want it to be adhered so it's not going to go anywhere. Um, and I'm going right into the edge of the linen. And I'm running out of thread, so I'll need to get more thread in a second. I love the roughness of it and the uh, organic quality of the material. It's really fun to work with. So I'm going to end this here. And this is a three weight uh, Steph Francis pearl cotton three weight. And I'm just going to add a bit more. And then I'm going to continue tacking this down here and letting it blend in to the existing piece, which is here, right? And I'll, um, I'm actually gonna stitch into it um, so that I have a double layer here, and then let this kind of flow on top, and hopefully it'll disappear. You won't even see that there's an edge here. That's the plan. Um, this is another piece that I added on. Again, I'm going to tack it down in a couple places using a thread that's very close to this background color. And this is what I've done um, below. So I'll have this kind of rough edge, which is kind of cool. I'm um, stitching this upper part, which is here, this part, and I'm stitching this lower section to it. And I have this idea where there's an obvious um, end and beginning to the two pieces. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just do an obvious stitching. <clears throat> on it kind of the way um, some of the African uh, masks are done with this sort of very obvious stitching that, that they use um, to, you know, if there's a crack or something in the mask, they'll do the stitching like with leather, which is kind of cool looking. I just brought this mask out. Um, it was in, it's in our it's actually in our living room, and I love it. it. My husband and I bought it years ago from um, uh, an African art dealer. But you see how they the piece is cracked, and so they did this very obvious stitching, which is really cool and um, and quite beautiful. You can see, so it's a double strand, and then another wire and I was thinking of sort of replicating that and then look at the eyes isn't that amazing with this it's um this is actually this material is um metal and cut for the eyes I just this is one of my favorite and in his mouth there's some sort of bone um well, I'm, I'm actually not sure what kind of material it is, but it's it's pretty cool. And then up here is encrusted with what look like the remnants of feathers and um, other materials. Look at the inside. It's quite something. The way it's carved. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, so anyway, this is what I was thinking of when I was stitching here. So I can, let's see, I might take this one out actually and stitch the cross here. Um, I think I will. 
So what I'm thinking is doing a little cross right here. And then coming over here and stitching over here. And then I can do one more sort of this way. And I could come in here and stitch around a couple of times. So that I get that kind of twisted thing happening there. And I can pull the thread down inside here and I can come out over here. So it just takes away from the, the beginning and the end. It, it kind of distracts from it a little bit so that, um, I mean, you can see that it's ending here, but you're certainly not looking at that. You're looking now at this, which I prefer. Now, the other thing is I've got some bark back here. Um, and I want to pull this up so that it's not flopping around. So I'm going to tack that down too. So I'll just do some stitches in here. Again, I'm not really worrying about the fact that, you know, the thread doesn't really match. There's no evenness to it. I might even wrap around like this a few times because why not? And then I can do the same down here and I can wrap around a few times here. And let's see, I'm going to push this down here like that. And I think I'll do one more little wrap down here. I'll pull away so you can kind of see what, what's going on. And I'll pull this down here. And then I think I'm gonna just tack this back bit down a bit. Just once before knotting it and ending this thread. I'm gonna start another thread because I wanna do something here. I'm not sure I'm gonna do it. Well, I think I will do it in the same color because I've done this so far, but I want to show you what it's looking like. So there's that. And you know, you can see it, but it's not, it's not really, really obvious. I'm going to have to put it on my design wall so I can see what that looks like. And I'm going to do something down here as well. So here is this. <clears throat> and I think it's pretty well adhered. And then I've got this area here, and I did another little round bit there to sort of just in keep the two nicely attached. But now I think I'm going to do a little of this um, waist 
along the edge here because I like the idea of this getting um, obscured a little bit by um, some of this green. So I'm going to put some of it and I'm going to let it go up right onto the bark with my little um, punch. I think then I can come in with this color and do a few more French knots a little bit closer and even onto the bark here so that it all looks, you know, more of a, of a piece and not just kind of stuck on. worrying that I'm punching right over these existing French knots because I'm going to come in now with some more uh, of that, of that um, thread and but I think that that works nicely and it also kind of blurs the line a little bit so that it's not quite so, um, I don't know. I like that it's a little irregular. that kind of overgrown feel to it, like it's sort of taking over. this back up on my design wall and see what it looks like. So there it is on my design wall. And, um, you know, I think it looks good. I think this is doing, uh, this is where the old, this bottom piece joins the new. And then, I'm not sure what's happening here, but it could certainly be kind of pulled out, but I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't need it to be um, straight. And you can see that the bottom here is going down. Otherwise it's pretty good. 
but uh you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna worry about that i can always um i could cut this off um you know lay it down on my cutting board and cut that excess bit off so that there's no brown i, I might do that i i think i'm kind of like that idea Uh, so, I don't know how much more stitching I'm going to do. I think I'm going to leave it up on the wall here and just kind of let it marinate for a while. And then I'll see if I want to add any more um, up here. But I I'm not sure I do. I I'm kind of feeling like I need, maybe just need to stop now. So that's it. That's, you know... Now, this is the other piece um, where I'm using bark, right? And you can see I've added this bit of linen from my friend Pat Polly, and this piece of linen, which is also from Pat. And I've got a seam down here, and I've got a seam running up here. But this seam is pretty much covered by this green bark, which I'm going to go ahead and tack down. And I've got another piece here that I've sort of pinned that I'm going to tack down as well. And I'm going to stitch over it. This piece of bark I've pinned and I'm going to tack that down. And then I'm probably going to cut this piece here and then sort of along this edge here. I think that's the idea. For now, I'm going to leave it and um, start working on that bark. But that's another example of using the bark. And obviously this is a big piece of bark, which I just love. And I did this, um, used this silk variegated Steph Francis thread. But you can see I've, you know, I've got a lot of different stitches. And then over here, I also used bark and did some turkey work and French knots. And uh, did I do drizzles? I don't, uh, I think I did some cast on. I can't even see what that is. Anyway. Um, but I did a series of running stitches all along here, along the grain. You can't even see it to adhere it. So this is some of the ways I've been incorporating bark into my pieces. And I just love this material. I think it's a really, really fun, um, easy to use, easy to work with material to incorporate and add some interest into your pieces. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was fun and helpful and interesting and let's keep stitching together.